Good afternoon, Hazel. I thought I would enter into the Christmas spirit of things for our last recording of our trickster book before Christmas. So I am, as you can see, wearing my bauble earrings, one sort of shiny one, one really glittery one. They are, of course, off of my Christmas tree. And I've got my little Christmas tree pendant. I don't know if you can see the little lights on it. And also, oh, where's, oh, my little Christmas tree snowman. So had I been in Hazel Learning Zone, I would be wearing this. So I thought I may as well wear it anyway. So there we go. That's me all Christmas up. Now we left Gabble with Ash, who is in a bit of a sorry way, isn't he? With very laboured breathing and everything. And the mother's rushing through the tunnel to be at his side. So we're only going to get the first part of chapter six done because it's a really long chapter. Uh, but as I say, I'm going to just read part of it. I'm not going to record in the Christmas break because, you know, not all of you can catch up with the story. So we'll all have a little break and it'll be very exciting to come back to in the new year anyway. So here we go. Chapter six, part one. The colony emptied in ones and twos. Rats appeared at entrances and lingered before bounding away to their foraging grounds. Gabble could just make out their greyish shapes and the pause run of their movement. Somehow below him a pair of flat feet boxed and rolled in the safety of the hedge before being admonished by their mother. Gabble listened, wondering how they could be so young. Ash's breath rasped in the air and Gabble half turned to him. Ash was staring too after the dispersing forms. In the moon glow, the stains around his eyes were black, like sunken pits from his skull from which his eyes themselves glittered. Ash looked a bit of a fright. The clan's new pups avoided him and whispered when he passed. They were frightened by his face and his rattling breath, but at least he was getting stronger and naturally doing his very best give everyone the impression he was fine. He had already tried heading down to the field and had been dragged back to the burrow, wheezing and coughing. Even Ash had admitted defeat. But still, here he was, gazing after the other raiders and itching to join them. What's it, Gabble? Ash caught Gabble's eye. He looked half amused, half annoyed. Can I help? Gabble shook his head. No, sorry, sorry I just caught sight of my baubles. No, sorry. If you keep staring at me like that, I'm going to get a headache. Ash tried a grin. It looked ghastly. Stop worrying, will you? I'm OK, I promise. But then his breath bubbled in his ribs and he hunched over, coughing and hacking. When eventually the fit passed, he straightened. Ouch, said Ash. Huh, that's you being OK, is it? It will be when I can get rid of this cough. You've only had a little time. You need more. That's what you said yesterday. Yes, and it was true then too. Gabble nudged Ash with a paw. We should feed. I'm hungry. A night breeze ruffled through their fur and Ash's whiskers twitched. Food? Hmm, what do you reckon? Notre Dame and eggs? Hedge and snails, said Gabble firmly. Especially if you're going to keep on coughing. Ash pulled a face. Hedge and snails, mmm, my favourite. But he walked up the incline to the mesh twigs and thorns of the hedge top. Gabble followed, pretending not to notice how long it took or how his brother's legs shook with the effort of doing so. Then they set to work, finding something to eat, eventually locating an unfortunate slug and some grass seeds. They chewed the slug together. It tasted nasty, but Gabble didn't complain. It was food and Ash needed to heal. Ash brought a kernel up to his mouth. His paw shook so badly that it took him several attempts. Then he fumbled for another and glared as it bounced down the slope beyond his reach. Oh, what's the point? Ash gestured angrily at the hedge and the kernel. Just look at this. Hiding in hedges like an old toothless rat. Is this all I've got? Gabble said nothing. Sometimes that was best. Ash gazed off down the slope. A muscle in his shoulder twitched. I never feared the taker. You know that, don't you? 
Yes, said Gabor, I know that. Ash had barely spoken of his illness and cut short any attempt to talk about it. Maybe he still thought he's, he's seen the taker and maybe not, but Gabor didn't really care. He just wanted his brother to get better. But whatever fever dream had gripped Ash had left teeth in his flesh and shadows in his mind. He was still Ash, but lessened somehow, as if something vital had leached away. It was true that he had never feared the taker, but he did now. Something further along the hedge made a skittering sound, like a pebble rolling or loose soil sifting downward. Gabble stared down the length of the hedge. There, almost lost amidst the thickest cover, he spied a suspicion of rat's whiskers. He squinted and saw a tail sticking out from beneath a branch. It was a rat and doing a terrible job of staying hidden. As he watched, it slipped from cover and slunk closer, keeping to the dark but moving clumsily. Ash, look! Ash, pawing at grain, barely glanced in his direction. What? Over there, a rat. We have lots of them, Gabbly. It's called a clan. Funny, yeah? But this one's being strange. The wind swirled and the newcomer's scent insinuated itself into Gabble's nostrils. That's got good sense of smell, haven't I? Gabble pulled it from his nose. Closer now, the approaching shape was looking distinctly fluffy around the edges. Oh, said Gabble, it's her. He raised his voice and called out. What are you doing, Feather? The rat froze among the hedge horns. It hesitated as though deciding what to do. Then Feather stepped from her cover and pattered down to where Gabble and Ash were waiting. She glowered at the pair of them. I, she said primly, am feeding. Gabble ran a sceptical eye over her paws and whiskers. She didn't look or smell like a rat who had been eating. You're a long way from your burrow, he said. So what? So why feed right here? Mind your own business. Nice. <laughs> Gabble, said Ash, pushing in front of him, is there any chance you could tell me who this is and what's going on? This, said Gabble, still watching Feather, is the Ackler's daughter. She came to our naming, but I don't know why she's here now. Ash looked from Gabble to Feather. Our naming, he repeated to himself. He opened his mouth to say something, but then a sound rang out, high and urgent, across the clan lands. Gabble's head snapped up. Next to him, Ash and Feather stiffened. An alarm. Intruders. Help needed. It's a call. We should go, said Ash. Feather nodded. We should. Come on. Gabble caught his brother's eye, which shone with excitement. But Ash was in no condition to fight. Ash, don't even think about telling me to stay here. Another call went up, now in several voices. Intruders. Intruders. Attack. Gabble dithered, split between his desire to help and his need to stop Ash from doing anything stupid. Feather just gave him a disgusted look. Oh, pull yourself together, she said. Then she ran, fur ruffling, for the source of the alarm. Ash grinned after her. Ooh, she's making you look bad, Gabbly. Gave Gabble a shove. Get going, will you? It's not like I can keep up anyway. Gabble nodded. Ash was right. Any fight would be long over by the time he arrived. More calls, more urgent this time. And with a final glance at Ash, Gabble sprinted down the slope. He scrambled and tumbled down the hill to the main run, found his footing and ran swiftly on. He reached the junction where the run split and his paws turned him to the field, following its border to the increasing sound of conflict. He ducked beneath a tangle of bindweed and hurdled a tree root. Loose mud skittered out from beneath his paws as he arrived, breathless at the border tree. This place was the closest point to the damp lands, as the limit of the green hedge... Oh, sorry. It was surrounded on one side by Notreland and the other by the field. The tree's branches spread thickly overhead, and beneath them, tall grasses gave way to bare, pocketed earth and scattered leaves. 
Gavel nose between the grass stems, peeking cautiously into the clearing. The space was filled with the smell of pain and fear and the sounds of scrabbling crawls and coarse yells. He saw two rats dash up the far edge of the clearing, squeaking in distress and making for the green hedge. In the clearing itself, six rats circled, two facing four, and nearer to Gavel, a rattling was staggering, weaving an uncertain path towards him. He recognised Groom, a female from his side of the colony, and he rushed to her side. Are you all right? On her coat he smelt anger and blood, and something else, fur bristlingly sharp and foreign, the scent of another clan. She was bleeding from a bite on her back. She tried to focus. Who? It's me, Gavel. Are you all right? She pulled her face. Hurts. He needs help, grist, and I saw feather. Find somewhere safe and wait, said Gavel, and I'll come back. Then he ran for the nearest rats. As he came closer, he recognised the bulk of grist up on his hind feet, boxing with a strange male. The fighters broke apart, sidling menacing, menacingly towards one another. Then the strange male caught sight of Gavel and gave a short laugh. Ha <laughs> ha! Reinforcements, is it? he panted. Should I be surrendering, or do I wait for your rattling to fight me? The male's eyes remained fixed on Grist's face. Grist glanced at Gavel, registered his presence. He smiled coldly. I'll spare you rolling over for Gavel, but only because you're such a nice rat. The male spat an insult and rushed forwards. Grist responded instantly leaping and striking with his forepaws. The intruder was caught, half-turned. With a jarring collision, both rats went down, sprawling and scrabbling on the earth, and then Grist was up, cleaning soil from his whiskers, while the intruder gasped, winded. Grist caught Gavel's eye and winked. Damp blanders, he said by way of explanation. They haven't raided like this since I was a pup. The male on the ground began clawing his way upright. I say put if I were you, Gris told him. He nodded to Gavel. I've got this one. Go and make yourself useful. And as the other rat staggered to his feet, Gris lunged, biting for the damp lander's rump. Gavel spun around, wild-eyed. Further down the clearing, Feather, flanks heaving, was facing down three ratlings, a male and two females. She was bigger than any of them, and they advanced cautiously. As Gavel came to her side, she whipped around, paws raised, and hair flying in all directions. He flinched back, instinctively raising his own paws. She blinked at him, nose and whiskers working. Oh, it's you, she said finally. The male damplander leapt for her teeth bared. Feather! Feather spun back and boxed at the male's head paws blurring. The male staggered sideways a few steps and before he could right himself, Feather jumped, landing squarely on his back. The two rats rolled over and over, squeaking and pummeling. Then they broke apart and the male cringed back. Feather shot Gavel a look. Do you want to try to be helpful? she demanded. Then she bared her teeth at the male who fled. Feather sprinted after him. Gavel was left facing two rats, a female and a thin young male. Both were lean and their backs were arched aggressively. They crept towards him, paw over paw. He watched carefully as they approached. Are you sure? he called. The female hesitated. What? I said, are you sure? You know, that you want to attack me. She blinked. It hasn't gone too well for your friends, I think. Gavel gestured at Feather's rattling, who was in full flight, a determined feather nipping at his haunches. You could get hurt, or I could get hurt. Hmm, and that would be much worse. The female stopped her advance, eyes narrowed. When Gavel made no movement, she sat up. She cleaned her whiskers, thoughtfully. Fixed eyes on Gavel's face. Her companion gave her an uncertain look, and then he too stopped advancing. See, this is better, isn't it? said Gavel, 
keeping his tone cheerful. Here we are and nobody's getting bitten. He smiled at them. So you're damp landers then. That's nice. I've always wanted to meet one. The female nodded. Her expression said that she couldn't quite believe what was happening. Which was fine, thought Gabble. Keep them guessing. I'm Gabble, he said. What's your name? Well, we're going to leave it there, Hazel. Well, this has certainly stepped up a gear, hasn't it? But, hmm, not so keen on all the fighting, but it does give us a little insight into the interactions um, and the camaraderie between the rats in the in the clan, doesn't it? So, we will find out what happens there in the new year. So it's time for my Christmas jokes. And I thought, seeing as it's the last recording before we break up for Christmas tomorrow, I'll do three little quick ones. So, here we go. A pirate goes to the doctors. Doctor, doctor, my overgrown parrot flew off my shoulder a few days ago and he hasn't come back. The doctor says, well, how do you feel now then? The pirate says, well, to be honest, doctor, it's a huge weight off my shoulder. Because that's where pirates sit, isn't it? I like that one. Okay, now this one I heard on the television. What do you call cheese that doesn't belong to you? Nacho cheese. I hope I got the accent right on that one. But we will finish with a little Christmassy one. Oh, sorry, just tinkled my baubles. Santa was having problems with his legs and found walking quite difficult. So he went to the doctors to ask what the doctor could recommend to help him. What did the doctor give Santa? A candy cane. <laughs> well, Hazel, have a lovely Christmas break. Enjoy yourselves, relax, chill out, just have fun. And I will see you all again in the new year. I'm going to do a couple of other recordings, actually, because I've written a poem for you and something to do with my smile groups, the lines, but that will all be revealed in the recording that I'm going to do in a minute. So have a very, very happy Christmas. I miss you lots and look forward to being with you again in the new year. Take care. Bye for now. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.